Dwarf number three. Night Dwarf number three. We're using forward chest. Remember, guys, um, here it is. Hopefully, you're ready. It's time to get it. This is a uh, Night Dwarf number three. So, remember, it's a 50% off through February. Cool. So, we're looking at in this one, um, of course, we're only picking parts of the book because you're going to go through the book yourself. So, you can go through all of it. We're looking at it from the black side. Today, we're looking at the English attack against the uh against um actually yes they, they do cover does the book cover uh rook g1 yes they do cover the rook g1 but that would be if you go scroll down here it'd be in the minor lines the minor lines odds and ids right here which we won't be covering that we're covering only parts of the book because uh we won't we can't we would get in trouble if we do more than what we're supposed to to say the least Bruh. so we're doing only a little bit of the book and here we're going to do the bishop g5 today we're going to look at the uh the english English attack, which is actually very common. What is that? What well, actually happens right here? We're going to look at e4, c5, knight of three, and d6, d4, takes, takes, right? Knight of six, knight c3. We are used to this already. a6, and then bishop e3. So bishop e3, and what it says before tackling our main subject of e5, knight b3, we're going to look at the f3 move order, which can be played. In fact, our standard reply is going to be e5, knight b3, and bishop e6, which actually still turns out to be sort of the same i want you to dig into this yourself so you're gonna to have to get the book to read the subtext highly recommend you look through the subtext but okay we're gonna look at the bishop e3 part is there a canty opening there is right here right here absolutely check it right there check it right there okay so after a6 bishop e3 um after the bishop e3 move this is very common theory the e5 happens next you kick the knight you kick the knight the knight goes back to b3 this is more a signifying, of course, they're going to go for most likely an English attack. But they have other, other options too, bishop e2 and castle and king side. But this way, f3, or actually, sorry, bishop e6 first is the move we make, and then f3. Other options do exist, which these will be discussed in chapter 7. What's up, D. Mitch? Here we go. Let's see what this says. This is about understanding. You always want to understand what's going on. All right, the text move introduces the English attack, a popular choice at all levels. White's plans, right? Remember, we always talk about plans. So when you get here, you can always remember what to do when you're facing the English attack if you're a Knight Dwarf player, right? Or if you're not, and so you're playing it from the white side, then you get to know what the ideas are sometimes yourself. Here we go. White's plan over the next few moves are straightforward and easy to understand. He intends some combination of Queen D2, so putting the Queen on D2, casting Queen side, and playing G2 and G4, followed by a King side attack. I've tried many different counterattacking systems myself. I have no hesitation in recommending that we curl tail white's kingside plans at once with the following modern solution h5 and actually anish giri recommends this too this is a fire move h5 i can't remember i've seen this so i think rafael Lido too as well recommends h5 h5 is a very strong move because you know g4 is coming so h5 is very good let's see what it says this advance is not uncommon in the night orb nowadays I remember long ago reading something attributing to the move to, uh, we're going to call him Big L there. According to my database, Lubo, okay, that's what this probably is, Lubojevic. All right, perfect. Lubo played H5 in 1997, while Sakev played it a few times in 1996, 1995, 1996. Nowadays, the move is often associated with Topolov as he played the, per the present position many times with both black and white. All right, so it says before going any further, they're showing you other moves that could be played besides H5 and Y. That is on you to do that. The subtext I highly recommend to read to understand, but we're not going to do that here. We're looking at only the main part of the English attack. Okay, let's go to where it should be. Um, oh, shoot, that might be it. Actually, is there anything after H5? That might be it. It might be a shorter video than usual, guys. Well, in fact, uh, oh, wait, is this a game? This is actually a game with it. No, that, but that's with nine bishop b2 which we're not covering now we're only covering um h5 we can outline oh yeah no we looked at queen d2 actually sorry no no we have one thing to look at which is down here so i did fast forward um and look at this ahead of time for you guys so we have to go down here to queen d2 which is the one that everybody usually plays it's down here queen d2 there it is queen d2 boom so when this queen d2 happens right here says this is common and consistent. White will castle on the queen side before deciding on the plan. We develop the knight, then castle queen side. They say if knight d5, you don't worry about that. You take with the bishop. And then it converts to a knight d5 move order, which is going to be explained on page 156. That's for you to get to page 156. Okay, so knight b to d7. 
Castle Queen side. Bishop to e7, developing. b5 is premature due to knight d5 after bishop takes. He takes knight b6, queen c3. Wow. Oh, and rook c8 is going to be hit with bishop b6, I think. And queen c6 is a threat, and bishop b7 isn't there yet. This is good to understand and go through this multiple times. Read this book, not just once. Move, uh, watch this video too as well. Bishop b7 is the move here, so now we can castle the king. King to b1. Seems like the move. Boom. King b1, pretty easy move. They do this a lot. The rook comes to c8 next. So not looking at black's next move, if we're looking at only black's here, usually here you would play rook c8. You don't have to castle right now until the rook, I know, hits e1. So right now I have rook c8, queen c7, and maybe b5 now. Let's see what happens. After king b1, the move is rook c8. We have reached an important tibia. White has tried several moves. Bishop g5 is rare. Bishop d3 is one of the main lines. And there's knight d5 as well. All right, this is spicy stuff. This is getting deep into the theory. Deep into the theory. We're going to look at one here. Let's look at the bishop g5 one. All right, thanks, thanks, Nick. Good to see you, bro. Bishop g5 one here. This has been tried by strong GMs and correspondence players. b5, it looks like the move. a3, this position can be reached. So a3 stops at b4. That's what that's usually about. Very interesting. And then castling. I've seen this before. H4 and rook e8. Oh, this gets spicy. Oh, man, this gets spicy. Okay, so rook e8. With this clever waiting move, black gives the bishop on e7 extra protection while leaving the rook. The c file open for the rook. So there is a move. Is it knight d5 right now? So I think if we're following the theory right, I think knight d5 and then knight takes, pawn takes, bishop f5. Bishop d3, you take on d3 and then take on g5 and play g6, something like that. Let's see what it is. Let's see what it is. So he plays bishop d3. They did not cover knight d5, it looks like, which is a move. But then this theory is very deep and dense for you guys to go through. Bishop d3, more developing. But if we're trying to notice where black puts his pieces, what's going on, so you can get an overview of where to put these pieces for quick play, especially when you're trying to learn this and play against the English attack, but also knowing the ideas yourself. Bishop to d3, played by white. I don't know, do I go here? Knight b6 is an idea. d5 is a blunder, I think. Let's see, rook b8 too is a move. So many moves. So many moves. Black plays knight b6. I remember seeing this, because the knight wants to go to c4. You also want to play d5. With d5, an ongoing possibility, black has a pleasant position in the following recent game. This is what happened. Knight a5 happened. Queen c7, lining up the queen and the rook. g4, you know that white is going to try to attack you. h takes g4, f takes g4. And then black finally broke with d5. Bishop takes f6, bishop takes f6, e takes d5, and knight takes. And this game was played in 2019, MVL versus Asis Garg. Gargatagli in this position. This is where it ended here. Okay, cool. Lots of lots of cover here. We covered a lot, obviously, there. So let's start back from the beginning. At least as far as we can go here. Okay, so this is having our our, our where we started right here. English attack. English attacks. From the beginning. I used to I usually like to briefly go through it and then run through it again. Slowly, obviously, you should go through it much slower. Um, while you're reading this on your own, we have the moves. The classic knight or bishop e3 happens. We go e5. We thrust the knight back. Knight goes back to b3. We go bishop e6. Usually you're going to do this anyway. Or bishop e7. Usually the moves are interchangeable, but I would just follow what it says. Bishop e6. Right. After bishop e6, f3. Stopping knight g4 stuff. And then bishop e7. Or sorry, h5 first. Stops the g4. It was just getting good. Exactly it was, wasn't it? h5. Okay, after the h5, what happened? We looked at the queen d2 stuff. Right after queen d2, what happened? I think it was bishop b7. Make sure. Let's just uh, scroll down a little bit. Find that again. Right here, queen d2. Queen d2 actually played knight b to d7 first. Castles, bishop b7. You see the development? You see how they're focusing on development, right? We're just looking at the board. Right, we did the knight orf moves. We played h5 to stop g4 in the English attack. Right, we went for that. 
sorry, Night PDD7. And then after, and then afterwards we developed. We develop again, develop again, rook c8 before even castling. Sometimes you can castle right into mate. Bishop g5, b5. Now, before even castling, we're pushing on the queen side. Castling. Nightdorf looks comfortable for black. Uh, it is very comfortable, but you always have to be very careful on when you castle and how and what's going on. Because you see how the development is. This is very nice development. We got b5. Whoever gets to the king first, opposite side castles is going to win, right? You know, white's on the white's over here, black's over here. So it's like it's all out king hunt. Rookie eight, a very nice waiting move again. Bishop d3, finishing development, knight b6, knight c4 is option, d5. See the flexibility? Because you could have played right here, you could play d5 or knight c4. He played queen c7 here. So this is good, guys. So you want to spend time going through this book. Go through this book a lot. Right, read it over and over and over. Check the other lines in here. We're only going to cover this part because we are only allowed to go through so much of the book. Remember, you guys can use um, um, uh, this book and obviously uh, the, the code here, 50% off until uh, the end of February, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Make sure you, uh, you're watching the rest of them if you missed parts one and two. I will link that in the playlist into the YouTube video. So make sure you guys subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you on the next video.